Good morning, everyone. Hey, uh, this morning, this is just going to be a real <laughs> video today. The jets are flying overhead. I mentioned that before that I live by Hillfield Air Force Base. And so sometimes the jets go over and I don't ever know when that's going to be. So if they fly over, just ignore that. It is just the reality of life. Okay, so the thing that I've been thinking about over the weekend okay, has come from a couple of different things, one of which is uh, probably the most prominent on my mind. Um, we had a death in our family and uh, just yesterday, and so it's very new and fresh on all of our family's hearts. And, but it has really caused me to reflect on the topic of our conversation today, which is living without regrets. Um, there was a nurse who worked with terminally ill patients, and she would ask each one of those patients before they passed away if they had any regrets in their lives. And to, so taking a study of that and the answers that she received, there were three top things that were brought up that I thought would be really important for us to think about. Because every single one of us are going to come to a point in our lives when our life will end. And we will move on to the next life and start that next portion of our existence. And and so I think that it's really important to focus on what we can do today to make sure that when we get to that point in our lives, that we're not living with regrets, that there are things that we have been able to do on a day-to-day -day basis that will make it so that when that time comes in our lives, we can look back and realize just how extremely blessed we have been and be happy with the results that we've had in our lives. And so it isn't just the regrets of the person who's getting ready to pass away, but it's also the regrets that I've noticed in family members from different experiences, not particularly this one, where they wished they had done something different with that individual, with that person that they love and that they care about. And so I wanted to really address just quickly three different areas that we can focus on that came from this study that was done and what people had said, they what their regrets were. They may surprise you and maybe not. The first one, they wished that they had spent more time with their loved ones. Now we have access through technology of being able to correspond with people in our lives. Either that's through social media, it could be through video um, broadcasting and, and video chats and um, emails, all of those types of things. But if you think about that, how close is that actually making your relationship? with the people that you love the most. And if there came a time when their life was done, would you be able to look back and say, I'm so glad I spent the time that I did with them, creating memories, serving them, just simply being in their presence. So what are you doing in order to create and build those foundational relationships with the people that you love, your family, your friends, the people that are in your community within your church, what are you doing to prevent that regret? It needs to be more than a text, sending them a funny video or, or just something cute and fun. It's really making it so that that person knows that you love them and that they are valued in your life. And, and also for you to feel that, to have that reciprocated in your behalf so that they can express to you their love. 
and to spend time with them. That takes time talking on the phone together. It takes time to be able to pull experiences and memories that you can create with one another and simply being available to serve them when they need it the most. So that's the first one. Spend more time with the people that you love. The second one, the second thing that people mentioned that they regretted was that they never lived up to their full potential. Now that isn't talking about a higher level on your job scale or more money or a bigger house or anything like that. It's referring to, have I lived up to the potential that God sees in me, in my life, the person that he envisions me being? And so the best way that you can do this on a daily basis is in your daily prayers and your communication with God is to ask for direction. What way, what step should I take? What direction should I take? What path should I be taking? And then follow those feelings. When you think about the things that you want to do with your life, does it make you come alive? Not just excited about going somewhere or doing something, but actually what you intend to do with your own personal life, does it bring you to life? Does it make you excited? For me, that's a manifestation from the Lord that you're taking the right direction, that you're going the right way. And then as you listen for those little steps to take you there, you can look back over your life and be able to see how the Lord has directed you all along the way and that you're not the same person. You're someone different. Your heart is different. So that's number two. Number three, the third thing that they mentioned was that they wished that they had allowed themselves to be more happy. We, we live in a very busy world. We have a lot of things on our minds. We have a lot of things on our agendas. And oftentimes we can get up in the morning and we can just go, 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 go. And it's all business. Things that we feel we have to get done. So one of the ways that you can allow yourself to be more happy in your life, to experience more joy and contentment with your life is to slow down. I know that seems kind of counterproductive, but actually when you slow down and you live in the moment, right? Mindful living, you live in the moment, then you are able to find the joy in the present. You can stop yourself from being caught up to getting to the end and actually enjoying the journey. There is a scripture in Psalms that I love that says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord gives us every single day in our lives that we can choose to be happy and to find joy because happiness is a choice. It really doesn't have anything to do with our circumstances. We can find joy in some of the most difficult of um, situations that we find ourselves in. There is always something that you can be grateful for and that you can find those little nuggets of joy in your life. So that's the third thing. So let's just review really quick. Three ways that you can prevent um, living with regret are first, spend more time with the people that you love. Second, allow yourself to be fulfilled in your highest potential, the life that God sees you living, the person that he sees you becoming. Third, Allow yourself to be more happy. Those three things. And that will allow you to every single day. You can even do an evaluation at the end of the day as to what you have done and how you have accomplished those three things. The other part of it too is that we all have regrets. 
We all have things that we wish that we could have done differently. And that is where the atonement of Jesus Christ comes in. It comes into play and allows us to be able to change and to do something different with our lives. And we can start that today. So my friends, take care. I hope you have a wonderful week. And until next time, remember, quiet the mind, nourish the body, and enliven the soul.